Hi boys and girls, welcome to our YouTube channel and welcome to this week's Scholastic News lesson. This week's Scholastic News is going to be um, our Aliens Reel. But before we go into that one, I also want to go through the answers to last week's Scholastic News, which was Break the Record. So can you please take both of those out? And we're gonna go ahead and look at last week's Scholastic News. So let me pull it up. And, oops, wrong. Okay, this is what last week's Scholastic News question looked like. Let me zoom in for you there. Okay, remember, you're gonna need a pen or a pencil so that you can mark your answers. If they're right, please put a star. If they're wrong, please fix it. We don't wanna leave anything wrong. Let me put this on full screen. All right, the first part is about the categories of hurricanes. And it says, how strong is that storm? Hurricanes have wild winds. They can damage buildings and push ocean water onto shore, causing floods. Experts put each hurricane in a category based on its wind speed. This chart describes the categories. So as you can see that there are five categories and your questions over here have to do with those, with that chart. So number one, how fast are winds in a category three hurricane? So we know we're gonna look at the hurricane, or category three and we're gonna look at the wind speed. So when I come down to this chart, I see this first column talks about the category the second column talks about the wind speed in each category. And this third column talks about the types of damage that happens in each category. And we're looking at category three, wind speed. So your answer for number one should be 111 to 129 miles per hour. Question two, what is one kind of damage you might see in a category one hurricane? So we know we're going to be looking at category one and we're going to be looking at the damage um, column. So category one, come over here to damage and you can write any of these three because it's asking for one kind of damage. So something like that, um, some, tree branches some tree branches break, roof shingles may fly off buildings, or some windows may break. Any one of those will be fine. So if you got that right, please put a star. If not, fix it. Uh, number three, in which category do winds bring down almost all trees? So now we're gonna be looking at, to see which category the winds would bring down almost all trees. Well, that sounds like damage to me. It's not asking for a wind speed. So let's look here. Some tree branches break. That's not all trees. Trees with shallow roots fall over. Many trees and power poles are snapped. Even more trees and power poles are toppled. Almost all trees and power poles are knocked down. So your answer for number three would be category five. So if you got that right, give yourself a star. If not, please fix it. All right, let's move down to the next set of questions. These have to do with the articles that we read. The first one is how to, the, rent, the article was how to be a record breaker. The author's main purpose in the article is to be, give tips on getting into the world record. So if you want to do something to get into the Guinness Book of World Records, it's gonna be new tips or suggestions on what you need to do. Number two. What is mentioned as a rule that a record setter might have to follow? Practice a lot. Yeah, you probably would, but that's not a rule. Page through the book. That means just kind of flip through the book and look, get some ideas. That's not a rule though. Have witnesses, hmm, possibly, and find your talent. Well, of course you need a talent to, to uh, get into the Guinness Book of World Records. But if you looked at the article, under the heading, Know the Rules, it talks about the little girl who was on a clover search, and it says, the Guinness rules explain what kind of evidence you must collect to prove you set a record. For example, Katie learned that she needed to have expert witnesses, timers, and a video of her doing her clover search. So that means the answer to number two is C. You need to have witnesses. 
Number three, what does evidence mean as used in the article? You should be very familiar with the word evidence since we use that in our writing all the time in the classroom. And that would be letter D, facts that show something is true. Which phrase in the article helps you understand the meaning of evidence? And evidence, again, is proving something. So you must collect evidence to prove that you set a record. So that is letter A. The next two questions are about the article Hurricane Hunters. The first one says, a hurricane hunter's goal is to, so it's not asking what a hurricane hunter is, it's asking what their goal is. What do they try to do? Do they try to stop a hurricane? Not unless they're mother nature. B, deliver supplies, not during a hurricane. C, gather information about a hurricane, maybe. Or land inside the eye. They don't want to land, they want to fly into it. So C, gathering information. The number six, drop zones are wild hurricane winds, thick hurricane clouds, planes that can fly into a hurricane, or tools dropped into a hurricane. So if you look back into the article under the heading spies in the sky it says hurricane hunters collect information about storms they release special tools called dropsons from their planes into hurricanes these tools measure things like temperature moisture and wind speed so that tells us that a dropson is a tool that is dropped into a hurricane all right so Look and see how you did. If you got them all right, please make sure you have stars on them. If you miss some, please make sure you fix them. And again, we're done with this Scholastic News. So if you would like to save it for another time to read, like a rainy day, you can give it to a friend. You um, are more than welcome to um, pass it on to your parents or do what you please with it. So. All right, let's move on to our lesson for today. It is on the, the, um, the Scholastic News, Are Aliens Real? Oops, we already checked our answers. Okay, so I mentioned earlier that we were going to talk about text structure this week when we re read our Scholastic News. And I'm sure some of you are thinking text structure. I know Ms. Dadger talked about that, but I'm not exactly sure what that means again. It's been a while. So here's a refresher. Text structure refers to how an author chooses to organize a text to help readers understand the content. And we talked about a, uh, a couple different kinds, but there are two that I wanna re remind you about today. So two types of text structure I want to remind you about are sequence or time order, that's one, and cause and effect, that's two. So let's talk about sequence and time order. Sequence text structure is describing or telling us about something that happened in a specific order. You might see timelines, dates, or sequence words showing an order of events. Recognizing if a text is using sequence will help you understand that the order the events happened is important for you to understand the text. And sequence text structure can also lead to our next type of text structure, which is cause and effect. So let's review cause and effect. Cause and effect text structure explains that an event or an action happened first, and that caused something else to happen, which is the effect. So for example, if it is raining, so the rain is the cause, you might hold up an umbrella to keep from getting wet. So holding up the umbrella is the effect. The rain happened, making you hold up the umbrella. So cause happened first, the rain, then the effect is the umbrella. Here's another one. I had to go to the doctor, that's the effect, because I got sick, that's the cause. Well, why did I go to the doctor? Oh yeah, it's because I got sick. I got sick first, that is the cause, and the effect of that was I went to the doctor. So sometimes when we're speaking or writing, we write the effect first, but you really have to think about what even really happened first. I didn't go to the doctor and then get sick. I actually got sick first, being the cause, making me have to go to the doctor, which is the effect. 
And lots of times, the text that we read can be both sequence or cause and effect. And events, and that's because events that happen in a time order or a sequence can make something else happen like that would be in a cause and effect relationship. So here's an example for something that's happening to us right now. So the coronavirus came to the United States in February. So we have a date, February. In March, schools closed to keep the virus from spreading. So we have another date, March. So that's a sequence, February and then March. Well, why did we close schools? We closed schools to keep the virus from spreading. So we have a cause and effect relationship along with the sequence. All right, so this week when you are reading your aliens or are aliens real scholastic news, I have some look fors for you. Look fors while you read. The first thing that you need to do is read all of the articles in the scholastic news. The next thing you need to do is to look for clues or evidence to tell you what type of text structures the authors used to organize their articles. And again, just focus on sequence and cause and effect. Is there, do you see evidence for both of those text structures or just one in the articles? And then I'll, I'm gonna check with you this week during our Zoom meeting to see what you came up with. So make sure you write down what you found in your red reading notebook. Okay, so let's preview this week's scholastic news. Let me share my screen with you. If that was last week's. Okay, so the, this week's scholastic news looks like this. Are aliens real? And again, I'm getting to this digital copy on my Scholastic app in Clever. So you can do the same thing and there's a lot of extra things that you can do to interact with the text. Um, this first article says, do aliens exist? And what's really neat about this is this talks about New Mexico. We have a city in New Mexico called Roswell that has been linked to UFOs or uh, spaceships that people think they uh, saw aliens land or a place where they think aliens landed. So there's a little video that goes along with this that I'll show you at the end of our video, uh, of, our, of this, uh, that talks about that. Um, but it's really interesting because I'm curious to see if you guys think that there's um, aliens out there. So this is an interesting article to read. And remember, look for text structure. The next article is called, What Happened to This Colony? This is the article that you are going to be taking your Illuminate quiz on. So read very carefully, look at all the text features in here, like there's captions, um, labels for maybe um, a part of the picture that they have, there's a map, there's highlighted print, bold print, there are are headings. All of these pieces of um, these text features are there to help you understand the text. So don't skip over them. Make sure you are reading everything. And then pay attention to the text structure. It, do you see evidence of sequence of events in there? Do you see evidence of cause and effect? Do you see both? And if you um, find something, write it down in your red notebook so we can talk about it. The next page in our Scholastic News has four different parts of the world that are mysteries. These are, are things that people don't really know a whole lot about. And you can see down here in the middle, there is a map of the world. Here we are in the United States in the dark green. And then you'll notice that there are four different white dots around the map. Your job is to figure out which one of these mysteries goes on each of the dots. Now I'm gonna give you a hint. There is one um, of these mysteries that is very close to us here in New Mexico. It's not in New Mexico, but it's close to New Mexico. And I've been there and I'm very excited to go back. I would love to take my family, so I can't wait till this uh, coronavirus quarantine is over so that we can start visiting places again. But it's very interesting to learn about the different parts of our world because especially now that we're 
kind of sticking or staying in our houses and we don't get to see a lot of the world right now. Um, another article here, A Mummy Mystery, is about um, the frozen mummy of a man that lived 5,300 years ago. So that's a really interesting read. And then um, I'm wondering how many of you believe in the Loch Ness Monster? This is an article about that one. So another interesting read. And then of course the questions on the back. Please answer these questions. Notice that there is a timeline, so a text, uh, text feature up here that will help you answer these first three questions. And then the other questions have to do with the other articles in the text. All right, I'm going to go back to the video here because I would like you to listen to this video. It's a short video and it talks about New Mexico and it goes along with the article, Do Aliens Exist? So let's check this out. Are we alone? Big-eyed aliens, flying saucers, whole civilizations on faraway planets. These exist only in movies, TV shows, and comic books, right? Well, maybe not. A lot of people think they're very real. I used to think UFOs and aliens were, you know, kind of silly. But when I started doing research for an article, I began to wonder, are we alone in the universe? Thousands of people say they've seen a UFO, and they're not necessarily making it up. They are seeing an unidentified flying object. But unidentified just means no one knows what it is. It could be anything. That's the real mystery. In 2004, U.S. Navy pilots saw a white oval aircraft hovering over the Pacific Ocean. It flew away at an astonishing speed. And in 1997, thousands of people saw strange lights floating in the sky over Phoenix, Arizona, but there was never an explanation for them. And possibly the most famous UFO sighting of all time happened in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947. A rancher found what he thought was wreckage from a crashed spaceship on his land. That's when things got really weird. The U.S. military said it was just a weather balloon that had crashed. But a lot of UFO believers think it was really a spaceship. They say that the military took it, along with a bunch of short gray aliens, like this guy, to a mysterious place called Area 51. This secret military base in the Nevada desert is the heart of many UFO theories. There have been hundreds of reports of unexplained objects in the skies above the base. Military leaders have long denied the rumors about Area 51, but in 2013, they did reveal that they have been testing super secret spy planes there since the 1950s, like this one, and this one, and even this one, I don't know about you, but I can see why someone might think these were a UFO. In another surprise, in 2017, the U.S. government admitted that it had been running a top-secret program to investigate UFOs for more than a decade. Whatever they've discovered hasn't been shared with the public, yet. Other experts are seeking answers, too, like a group of scientists who run the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, or SETI, they are using giant radio telescopes to listen for alien signals from the far reaches of space. Maybe one day soon they'll find something, or someone. So what do you think? Are we alone in the universe? All right, well, I actually would like to know the answer to that question too. I wanna know what do you guys think? Do you think that we're alone in the universe? All right, so let's go back to what we're working on this week. So here's your assignment. The first thing, read all of the articles in this week's Scholastic News. Um, the second thing, look for clues as to which text structures are being used in the articles. So do you see evidence of sequence or see evidence of cause and effect or do you see both? Write down your evidence in your red reading notebook so we can talk about it during our Zoom meeting this week. And then answer the questions on the back of the Scholastic News and we will check them next week on my YouTube video. And finally, please take the quiz on Illuminate by Friday. It's called What Happened to This Colony? And don't forget to answer in complete 
sentences. And also, if you're using a word that is in the text and you're not sure how to spell it, it's okay with me if you go back into the text and look at the spelling to make sure you spell it correctly. All right, but last and not least, I want you to have fun learning about the world around us. All of these scholastic news are meant for kids. And because we're stuck in our homes right now, we are having, we're not having a lot of opportunities to explore the world around us. So these, these scholastic news teach us about things that we might not otherwise know about. So I want you to really take some time, read the articles, think about the articles, and just enjoy what you're learning. All right, boys and girls, that is all I have for you this week. So I want you to please continue to work hard. Again, as always, I miss you so much. And I hope that you have a great week. Please make sure you uh, join me and Miss Hadamio on our Zoom meetings because we love seeing your wonderful faces. All right, boys and girls, we'll see you on Zoom. Bye-bye.